the Holy Spirit moving us today in the 21st century. I met with those Pentecostals who said, well, that's it. Now, whatever had to be revealed, we go back there where the New Testament was, and, and, and that's it. There's no more revelation to be waiting for. We have it all. And I thought, that's Pentecostal pride. There's still something more. We are not yet there. No, I kept on going on while I was discussing with my leaders and looking at all this history. And I kept on saying, you know, we're moving back into the New Testament model church. Until one of my pastors asked this question. He said, uh, But when we look at the New Testament, the church was very immature and incomplete. Look at the Corinthian church. You're saying that we are moving back to the New Testament church, but the New Testament church itself was immature. Are you really sure we got the vision right? I really had to step back. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm lost now. What is our goal? And suddenly something was rising in the answer given by the Holy Spirit. I said, you are right. We are not... The model is not the New Testament church. The model is a vision of the Holy Spirit, uh, of Jesus Christ, of a mature church. A mature church. Hallelujah. And we are still moving towards that mature church. There are principles given in the New Testament for a new church. But the church that was there at New Testament times is not the mature church. It's the vision that is being represented in the New Testament, which is the new church. It talks about a bride that the Holy Spirit is the one working on and purifying and cleansing and making it ready. And God is still in the business of making His church ready in this 21st century. There is an emerging church in India we talk about an emerging church. An emerging church in the 21st century that is looking for things that, that have not yet been discovered up to 20th century. That does not want to be clamped down by denominational thinking anymore. That looks for more. And I realize that there is a movement in India across a lot of independent groupings are coming up. Why they are independent? Because they are looking for new. I met a number of people who do not want to join up with organizations in India. The reason is not anything else but this. We don't need the finance. We don't need the funds. Organizations means there is funding, there is financing. And if you are funding and somebody is the leader and tells the other this is how you have to behave and do, and please the leader. But we are not looking at churches that please in the leader, but you are looking to churches that please the Holy Spirit. That take up the nation. Denominations or, 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 or organizations that are doing what the organization is wanting to do. That are fulfilling the vision of the organization instead of fulfilling the vision of the church of Jesus, a mature church. That is relating to one another. That's relating to others. In many denominations, you are being restricted. You are not supposed to relate to this and that and the others. But we can be free today in the Holy Spirit and relate to different ministries. I find those Pentecostals who find it very, very difficult to relate to those who are Lutheran or Anglican or even Catholic. find it very difficult to relate to them. Better not to relate to them. But what does the Holy Spirit stop us? Because He has His people in any churches. Let us join hearts and shepherd a city. I want you to read with me in, 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 in Jeremiah chapter 33. In Jeremiah chapter 33, God is talking about the restoration of Israel, the restoration of Jerusalem. But this after He has punished them, after the exile, when God is going to call them all back again, He talks about the restoration in verse, verse 9. And it shall be to me a name of joy, praise and glory before all the nations of the earth. 
which shall hear of all the good that I do for them, and they shall fear and tremble because of all the good and all the peace that I make for it. God wants to restore, and God is in the business of restoring the church to be His joy, His praise, His glory before all the nations. What does it bring forth? The fruit of a church that is the joy, the praise and the glory before the nations is that they shall fear the Lord and tremble. That they shall fear the Lord. Our cities and our nation shall fear the Lord. Because the church is restored and become mature. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bring our nation to that place where we fear the Lord. Now apparently it sounds to me that this is one of the most important things to happen. That a nation fears the Lord. If I think of my nation Germany, the fear of God is lost. There was a church that was well functioning. Up to the 19th century. But then the fear of God began to drop. Today in the 20th century definitely uh, uh, churches are being dismantled. And uh, uh, people are, have been leaving churches or leaving the membership of churches in thousands. The reason was people just had no fear of God. The lifestyle in Germany generally can be described as a lifestyle without the fear of God. That God wants to bring a change as the church in the 21st century comes to maturity and becomes the joint praise and glory to the nation. And brings back fear of the Lord. Now if you go to me to, uh, with me to verse 12. Well, find something interesting. Thus says the Lord of hosts, There shall again be in this place which is raised without man or beast, and in all its cities a habitation of shepherds who rest their flocks. And in verse 13, In these, in the cities of the hill country, in the cities of the lowland, in the cities of the Negev, in the land of Benjamin, in the environments of Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, the flock shall again pass under the hands of the one who numbers them. Now I like the thought that here cities are being mentioned. Cities, 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 in the different places. Talk about our nation and the cities of our nation. Cities have an important, important role within the nation. Now what is what is God looking at these cities? What is His joy that as He restores cities? What does He want to restore, restore here? It's shepherds. Shep there shall be shepherds. And as I meditated over this, Restore things, cities where God brings forgiveness are cities where there will be shepherds. Shepherds who flock or who have flock will look after their flock. Other pictures that are now that have come up is that there should be apostles and prophets. But they are still shepherds. The word shepherds, as I find it in scripture, even in the New Testament. I know the word pastor has been misused and misunderstood. The word shepherd is not the pastor in the New Testament. The word shepherd or the shepherding ministry are the elders of a church. The elders have the shepherding ministry. That means all, whether you are an apostle or a prophet or whoever you are, you are a shepherd. It means you are shepherding the people. In the Old Testament, kings, priests, prophets are all seen as the shepherds of the nation. Any ministry that reaches out and looks after people in the town, in the city, are looked at shepherds. God would look even at our national leaders and political leaders as shepherds of the nation. 
But God has not found good shepherds. And that's why Israel had to be rejected. Kings had to be rejected. Even to the extent that priests and prophets had to be rejected because they were lacking the shepherding ministry. They did not shepherd. They only lived for their own. But they didn't live for the people. Other pictures are fathering. Fathers and mothers for people. I think it covers a similar uh, um, understanding and feeling of God. Shepherding or fathering. There shall be shepherds. And I believe that this is now very strongly talking about churches and ministries that understand their shepherding ministry, their shepherding call towards the cities and towards the nations. Let us shepherd families, let us shepherd couples. The nation, their marriages and families have broken down. If I think of my own country and Germany, where, where even marriage, marriage is completely misunderstood in these days. And we need to sh- literally shepherd couples to live up to, to what it means to be a husband and wife towards one another. Let's take up a shepherding and let's take them as flocks. I think I have not thought this way. I have not thought this way that a couple needs to be shepherded in terms of be a husband and be a wife unto your partner. But I feel now something is rising that we need to shepherd uh, husbands to be a husband and uh, and, and uh, mothers to be a mother and fathers to be a father. I've only thought about shepherding in terms of people being, uh, uh, you know, worshiping God or being saved or living as sons of God. But today I begin to feel that we need to shepherd a nation in taking up society roles in the positive and in the right way. Let grandfathers and grandmothers come back into their role as grandmothers and grandfathers. And even if I look at Germany once again, I mean there is a great need of grandfathers to live up to the demands of a grandfather. You cannot live a grandfather when you are pushed in an old people's home. You would need to live with your family, but in Germany, uh, uh, mothers and fathers have isolated themselves in terms of bringing up their children. So once you're 80, you want to be independent, you want to have your own house, once you get married, you want to live in another place, and we will live in another place, and as long as we can look after ourselves, we will look after ourselves. Isolation is programmed by the parents, and now they are grandparents and crying, and said, actually, we didn't want this isolation, but you're programmed in the way you have raised up your children. But I thank God that movements are coming back. I was listening to the radio in Germany where where a report was saying that companies have rediscovered those who are beyond 15. Those who are usually being cast aside. They are no use to the company anymore. They, they hardly get jobs, but companies are recognizing and realizing that they are the ones who are carrying wisdom and experience. They can father, they can shepherd the young ones who are coming up in the companies. So they are being pressured, treasured once again. It's still a movement that still needs to take up uh, um, uh, a movement in Germany and hopefully also in other nations. It's time for us to live it out. If we are shepherds, we will have such flock that will become shepherds again. If we are fathers, uh, so if we are spiritual sons, if we, we, we easily become spiritual fathers. I have treasured to be a son of my father. I have experienced a good father. And uh, it was natural and easy for me to be a father myself because I had been a good son. I had appreciated my father. I watched him. I observed him. I trusted him. I honored him. I appreciated him. And if you are a good son, you can be a good father. And the call is today to be good, good sons. Good sons to our spiritual fathers. So we will automatically become good fathers. And we pray that God will raise up sons who will understand sonship, who will understand to be good sons and daughters. 
because they will become the fathers and daughters tomorrow. God is changing our perspective in the 21st century. This is our call to shepherd our cities and nations. We are drawn together as shepherds from different fields. Fivefold ministry must have a new meaning to us. And that each one is really cooperating with the other one, complementing one another in order to bring out a mature church of Christ. I want to end up with one Bible verse in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 11. Moreover, God says, I will make my dwelling amongst you, and my soul will not reject you. I will make my dwelling amongst you. 